Present. Yes. Great. Present. Commissioner Gallardo. Present. Uh, Commissioner Jefferson. Present. Great. And I, Commissioner Scafano is present. So um, that concludes that item. The next item is neighborhood council representatives. Do we have any today? Um, if you are joining by phone, press star six to unmute yourself and star nine to raise your hand, please. Thank you, Scott. Um, I see we have no neighborhood council representatives. So the next item is public comment on non agenda items germane to the business of the commission. Are there any? I'll take that as a no, so we can move on to the next item, which is item number five, public comment germane to the, uh, the agenda items. Okay, so there are none. Um, approval of the minutes. I think the last uh, commission meeting was May 11th. I was not present and Commissioner Ho, I think you were also not present, but uh, Commissioner Jefferson, I think you led that meeting, correct? Sorry, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> so um, are there any comments regarding the meeting notes or? I can move them for approval. Okay, great. And I'll second. Great. So first by Commissioner Jefferson, second by Commissioner Gallardo. Um, all in favor? I guess I guess you two are the only commissioners that were present, right? So that would be, do we need to take a vote on that? Because I guess yes. we'll yes. just do a vote. They need to be they need to be approved. Okay. So uh, Commissioner Ho, how do you vote? Yes. Um, Commissioner Gallardo? Yes. Commissioner Jefferson? Yes. And I, Commissioner Scrafano, vote yes. So motion is approved. Um, the next item, I will read this paragraph because this allows us to teleconference um, for this meeting. Um, findings to continue teleconference meetings pursuant to AB 361 action items. A recommendation to adopt the findings and determination in accordance with AB 361, Section 3E3, that while the state of emergency due to the COVID-19 pandemic as originally proclaimed by the governor on March 4th, 2020, remains active and or state or local officials have imposed or recommended measures to promote social distancing. This legislative body has, um, oh, hang on, sorry. This legislative body has reconsidered the circumstances of the state of emergency and that the state of emergency continues to directly impact the ability of members to meet safely in person and or state or local officials continue to impose or recommend measures promoting social distances. Social distancing, sorry. So this is a action item. Do I have a motion to approve item seven? So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Ho. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Jefferson. So we'll take a quick roll call vote. Commissioner Gallardo, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Ho? Yes. Commissioner Jefferson? Yes. And I, Commissioner Scrafano, vote yes. So item is approved. So now we are moving on to the next item, which is the Arts Activation Fund projects. Um, and the first one is the Valley Artisan Fest. And I do believe that we have someone from the councilman's, the councilman's office, Cheryl, I think is here today with us. Um, and then the staff uh, presenter will be Ben Espinoza. Hey, uh, very good Thank afternoon, you, commissioners. Hello. Um, Today we have one Arts Activation Fund project for consideration. It is the Valley Artisan Fest scheduled on Saturday, September 10th, 2022. Quilting for Community at Chatsworth Northridge-based uh, nonprofits requesting $20,000 to put together this event in Council District 12. This event will be multidisciplinary in nature with a strong emphasis on quilting and fiber arts and a showcase of other Valley-based visual and music and performing arts. Taking place in, on September 10th, as I mentioned, 
uh, expecting an attendance of around 3,000 people, um, paying 37 artists involving 30 volunteers. I'd like to invite now Ginger Page from Quilting for Community to unmute yourself, introduce yourself to the commission as I prepare your presentation for you. Ginger. And Scott, if you allow me to share my screen, I have a presentation for Ginger to share. Okay. Can you hear me, Ben? Ginger, we can hear you. Okay, great. And I'm just waiting to have the screen shared with me. I'm, I'm awaiting sh screen sharing permissions. Okay. Well, I, I guess I could just start telling you that I'm a, a volunteer at Quilting for Community. And Liz Laurel, our director, would love to be doing this presentation, but she's out of the country. And um, so you've got me. And we're really excited about this opportunity. And I'm just waiting for my presentation to load. And you're sharing your screen with me, Ben, correct? Juan, are you able to make her a, a co-host? Okay, I think it went through. Can you check to see if you're able to share your screen, ma'am? I am, I, am attempt, I am attempting to share my screen, but I don't have the permissions. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I, I made her the co-host. Okay, Mr. Espinoza, your co-host now. Great. All right, I am now sharing oh, my screen. Terrific, thank you. So as Ben said earlier, um, our proposed Artisan Fest will be Saturday, the 10th of September from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. And we've been granted permission to use the Chatsworth Metrolink station. And that's on Old Depot Plaza Road in Chatsworth. And um, I want to tell you a little bit about our organization. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization, and we offer free, safe, creative, intergenerational space to learn the art of quilt making. And then the um, quilts that our attendees make are gifted to individuals and organizations throughout the valley and beyond. Um, we teach to reach the community. Um, we carry on the diverse heritage of quilters and fiber artists. And um, our particular organizations, we thrive on fabric donations that would otherwise end up in a landfill. So it's really a, an earth friendly organization. And uh, we empower people to learn new skills. And many of our attendees go on to become our teachers and teach throughout the community as well. Our fest in, and we're hoping this will be 2022 and beyond, um, we're going to offer free community workshops led by local artists. Um, the strong emphasis will be quilting and fiber arts. We will have long arm quilting where the attendees will actually quilt on a donation quilt. We'll do block printing. Our visual arts will include painting, photography, crafts of all kind. Got ahead of myself. Fiber arts will be felting, spinning and weaving. We'll have uh, music, dance, um, a lot of food and with local wine restaurants and food trucks. Uh, wine and beer will be provided uh, by local craft breweries and we'll have controls in place to make sure that it is um, family friendly. Um, this Artisan Fest is going to expose local artists to a wider community. Uh, it provides a creative space for the community to learn, explore, and play. And then some of our um, partners in this, the community is going to meet the quilters of Quilting for Community, Hope Gardens Quilters, the 1111 Collective, My Creative Outlet, Craftiness, and the Great One Aiders. 
um, the public is going to have the opportunity to design fabric, fabric squares that will actually become part of a community quilt or quilts. Um, they're going to try our long arm quilting machines to finish donation quilts and make mixed media greeting cards. And these are just a few samples of some of the visual arts, um, nature art, mixed media projects, upcycled art sculptures. And with our food and beverage focus, local chefs will share tips and tricks in the kitchen, um, explore food pairings for local craft beer and wine, and have tips from the experts. Um, for our event structure, each art tent um, will showcase a lead artist along with four to five uh, other artists. They will uh, demo, teach, and showcase their art. The main stage is going to feature performances and mini workshops. Each tent will also feature a marketplace for the artists to uh, sell their wares. And the public will enjoy crafting, tasting. Oh, you're pushing me along. Okay, so 37 paid artists, 30 volunteers, and we hope to have 3,000 audience members. We will market this event through radio, TV, and print, press releases, social media, cross market uh, marketing with uh, the vendor social media. And this is our budget. Um, we will use most of the money. Thank you for enlarging that. We'll go to pay the artists and um, we will um, have CD12 is going to partner with us for a lot of donations. Plus we will be getting other items from other organizations. Did your, does that conclude your presentation? It does. Great, thank you. I just, I, I don't wanna interrupt, but I noticed that two people had joined um, on the phone uh, prior to you, uh, right before you presented, Ginger. So I just wanted to open up uh, the forum quickly, just if there is any public comment uh, to address that now, and then Ginger will get right back to your presentation. Okay. Um, for the two members that have joined, um, do, you, uh, do you have any public comment, Jermaine, to the agenda items? I think I'll take that as a no. I don't see any raised hands. Okay, so we'll close that item. And then, um, so is this, is this, Ginger, are you the final presenter or is there someone else that's going to present after you? No, I am the final presenter. Okay, great. Ben, do you have anything to say? Or I'll open it up. I to forgot the to add that uh, letters of support were submitted um, on, in support of the project Valley Artisan Fest by the Office of Council Member John Lee, um, a, a community based organization in Chatsworth, supportive of the project, as well as two educators from a local public school in Northridge, where Quilting Community for Community has a residency. Great. Thank you. Um, so on that note, I'm gonna open up um, to see if my fellow commissioners have any questions or comments. Uh, Commissioner Jefferson, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, just well, uh, two, one, if, if I read the budget correctly real quick, it looks like your lead artisans are gonna get about 600 and something dollars for the day, each a day for the day. Yes. Am I reading that right? And, um, and, I saw on one of your slides that there's a marketplace. So are the artists artists emerging and the lead artists having opportunities to also uh, potentially sell their art during yes, the day? Yes, they, they will, as well as, um, you know, our organization Quilting for Community will sell quilts that aren't uh, designated for donation. And and I and I probably missed it, but it it's on September tenth. What what time does it start and end? It starts at four p.m. and ends at nine. 
Okay, great. Thank Trying you. Trying to get out of the heat a bit. Yeah, that makes sense in Chatsworth. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Jefferson. Commissioner Ho, do you have any questions or comments? None. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Gallardo? Um, no, just a comment. Love quilting. Love to see the valley celebrated for its artists. Um, uh, the only thing is, um, I'm guessing that the funds, the donated funds, are these in-kind donations? Um, that would be like, for instance, uh, CD12 will be giving us tents to use and porta potties. Is mm -hmm. does that answer your question? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're That's welcome. Yeah, Ginger, I, I love the, I love quilting also. So it's, oh, good. it's exciting well, to see. Oh, you come by. Oh, Our yeah. Shop. We, we usually write down the, the events and if we can attend, we try to attend as commissioners. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So um, I wanted to state also that this, it's not for, con this is just, uh, it's not for conceptual final, but do we have a motion to approve the arts activation fund project? Um, Don't move. Thank you, Commissioner Second. Jefferson. Thank you, Commissioner Holm. Do a quick vote. Uh, Commissioner Gallardo, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Ho. Yes. Commissioner Jefferson. Yes. And I also, Commissioner Scafano, vote yes. So motion is approved. Congratulations. We're excited. Uh, thank you so much. We are very appreciative and very excited. Congrats, Ginger. Okay. Thank, thank you, Commissioner. You. Congrats. Yep. Okay. So the next item um, is the public arts project. And this project is called The Awakening. The location is Mateo Street in the Santa Fe Avenue intersection underneath the 4th Street Bridge. Um, the presenter, will it's both for conceptual and final. Um, someone who was waving their hand. Uh, the presenter is Yami Duarte from Department of Cultural Affairs. So, Great. Yami, can you yes. go ahead? Thanks. Thank you, Commission. Um, <clears throat> my name is Yami Duarte. I work for the Public Art Division Murals Program, and I'll be presenting a project led by Arts District LA, Business Improvement District. And Miguel Vargas is here uh, as part of the board, and Adam. Is that Normandin? Great. <clears throat> um, so uh, let's see. Can I get? Can I share my screen? Um, am I a co-host? Yeah, you're a co-host now. Okay. Let's see. All right. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Great. So. <clears throat> This is the 4th Street Bridge underpass. It's next to the Santa Fe Avenue intersection and the Mateo Street. Uh, the bridge is owned by Public Works Bureau of Engineering. It's within the district um, of council member Kevin De Leon, District 14. The artist is Nikos. Uh, project amount is $6,000. The funding source is Arts District LA, Business Improvement District. We're requesting conceptual and final and um, there is no history with the Public Art Committee. So in an effort to transform the 4th Street Bridge underpass from a graffiti magnet into a vibrant stimulating wall, the Arts District LA Business Improvement District LA launched the 4th Street Bridge underpass beautification project. Um, they established a, an artist committee uh, made up of a group of artists who live in the Arts District established a budget for the project, submission process, and evaluation criteria. Over 30 mural proposals were reviewed, <clears throat> and NICOS was selected. The project is titled The Awakening. Um, the Artist Committee announced the winning muralist at the Arts District Bid Public April 2022 meeting. The mural will be coated with a permanent anti-graffiti coating. ADLA, uh, their maintenance plan outlines a daily upkeep of the area 
with removal of debris, tagging, and paste ups. <clears throat> Uh, we see no cons. The pros are that the mural will beautify a blighted area under the street bridge of the Arts District community. And so I'll, I'll introduce Miguel to the conversation. You can go ahead and start talking about the co concept. Yes, uh, commissioners, thank you for having us today. I'm here with uh, Adam Normandin. Our, he's the chair of the Artist Committee. And so um, you know, we, we sought out to just beautify the neighborhood and beautify this area. And it was really Adam with some of the other artists who picked this particular piece over all the other submissions because they felt it was the strongest piece. It was uh, the most, uh, <clears throat> just mo most uh, just appropriate for the space. And so what you're looking at there is uh, an artist who he wanted to depict his own journey uh, and so coming into consciousness, right? And so on the far left, and, and mind you, this is just a draft. So it's just a mock-up. It still is going to have a lot more color than this. But the art, on the very far left, you'll see the actual artist who kind of depicts himself there as being touched by the hand of the universe. It's kind of hard to see the hand. But uh, once it's all colored in, you'll see it. The hand of the universe is coming down, touching him on the head, uh, awakening him. And so after that, he's able to look through his third eye, he opens up his third eye and kind of, he starts to see himself and he starts to deconstruct himself and shed the different layers, uh, of his, e of, you know, um, removing his ego and all the other negative energy from his body and his, uh, consciousness. And then he's reborn. You can kind of see that, uh, in the, as the depiction of a baby in, inside of the skull's head. So this the individual is then reborn and, and he's awakened now. So this mural is to kind of highlight the, it's a piece, it's a beautiful piece of art and it will be once it's done, but it's also to kind of raise awareness and bring light to uh, the awakening and to consciousness with the universe. And that's the design. Thank you, Miguel. I also want to show some examples of the artist's work so you can see it, see the style. So here is a piece. Uh, and then Adam, I'm not sure if you want to add anything, if I missed anything. Yeah, I would just point out that we felt that this painting was, uh, first of all, it's not as risque as some of the examples that you just saw, but uh, uh, this, this piece, uh, the, the meaning behind it is, is, is really a message about transformation. And we felt that that was very appropriate for uh, the arts district and where we are in our current state of development. And uh, as Miguel pointed out, this piece is uh, also site specifically designed. It's a very, very long horizontal corridor and the painting uh, flowed from left to right. He thought, he thought that was really uh, pretty cool. So uh, Nichos is uh, a very renowned artist. He's very prolific. He's installed murals all around the world. And uh, we, we feel very lucky to uh, have his interest. He also happens to live in the arts district. So he is a local artist. So uh, for all those reasons, we, uh, we, we chose Nichos. Great, thank you. Um, is that, Yami, is that the conclusion? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna reach out to my fellow commissioners and see if they have any questions or comments. Commissioner Jefferson, do you have any questions? I actually think it's really interesting. I'd be curious to see what it does in color, but I, I, um, I, think, it's, I think it's really interesting. Um, is there a wall on the opposite side that's gonna have artwork too? We would, there is a wall on the opposite side. We would love to have artwork on that side. The only problem is um, 